and welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral on this fifth Sunday in our Lenten time. My name is Paul Millward, and it is my privilege to welcome you to this time of worship in the form of a service of the Word as taken from the Book of Alternative Services. I am joined this morning by our vicar, the Reverend Michael Decay, and by Catherine and Ian Sadler, providing musical leadership. Our thanks to Trent Fieldhouse, John Spruill, and Brian Elliott for all of their efforts and making this time possible. Our thanks for the many positive responses to last week's worship, and for the helpful comments for us going forward, which we have tried to incorporate into our time this morning, including creating more distance, more physical distance, between the worship participants in the sanctuary. Our diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Todd Townsend, has indicated that the suspension of live worship and other ministry activities in the diocese has been extended, meaning that all of our Holy Week and Easter services will be offered through our website and YouTube channel. Although this will be a very different experience for us, we believe that in our fast from the Eucharist, we will feast on the Word and that our experience of the resurrection will be enhanced and not diminished by this time apart. Please visit our cathedral website regularly for updates and be assured of our ongoing prayers for you in these anxious times. Our opening hymn this morning, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. morning is taken from the words of Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. reading from the Gospel of John. Now a certain man was ill, 
Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this is illness, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and he is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village and was still at the place where Martha had, had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt down at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, 
his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning reminds us that Jesus still shows up and that He prevails. Whenever Jesus shows up, the dead come to life. Today's Gospel radiates with the good news of the power and the presence of Jesus. As we were reminded last week, the Lord is our shepherd. He leads, he restores, he protects, he provides, he anoints. His goodness and mercy are with us always, even as we pass through the valley of the shadow of death. Martha believed in the resurrection of the dead, but she didn't want to be separated from her dear brother. That's understandable. And she didn't want to wait. That's also understandable. Martha was angry at Jesus for not being there when she thought that he should have been there. But Jesus moves beyond this. He's talking about now. Not what might have been or could have been. He's challenging Martha to put her trust in him. Lazarus, being called from the grave, is a bold reminder of God's power to transform our lives today and every day. Many of us are feeling overburdened, pressed down, and pulled apart. Can we live again? Can we see beyond what is in our control? Are we, like Martha, feeling anger toward God for seemingly being absent? This story boldly reminds us that Jesus was in control of an uncontrollable situation. Those gathered beside the grave saw no hope, but Jesus shattered the barriers between Lazarus and hope for a new day. We are challenged this day to set our goals on what God can do through us. As poet Anne Weems has well expressed, I reach for the rainbows, thinking one morning the hungry will be fed, the dying held, the maimed walking, the angry stoked, the violence stroked, the oppressed freed, the oppressors changed, and every tear wiped away. We are like Lazarus, being called to new life even when the situation seems hopeless. We are being called to trust in Jesus. The theme of today's gospel story is that Jesus is in charge. When Jesus arrives, the dead are set loose from their bonds. Jesus doesn't wring his hands over death or blame or deny. He goes to the cemetery in order to roll back the stone. We claim from this story the power of Jesus to call us out of where we are buried, buried in our fears, our pain, our grief, our worries, and life's pressures, life's many dangers, toils, and snares. We're challenged to believe that it is, that it is never too late to rise again, to respond as Lazarus did, and to come forth to new life. We too can claim this hope. As the ancient psalmist proclaimed, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. We are only two weeks away from that moment of Easter when we renew our baptismal promises. Do you believe in God, of, in the God of life, who created all that is? Do you believe in Jesus, the crucified and risen Lord, who died and rose so that, we may, so that we might have life again? Do you believe in the Spirit of God, the breath, the divine breath, 
that brings new life wherever it blows. Today's gospel radiates with the good news of the power and the presence of Jesus. Today we affirm that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into this world to free us from all our sin and death. May we know and experience afresh, through the power of God's Spirit, that new life in Christ. And may we continue to serve God in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now join together for a time of prayer. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the Church throughout the world, that, especially in these anxious days, it may be a faithful witness, preaching the Gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord, Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world and for our willingness to reach out safely in love, and that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need of God's healing touch upon their lives, we remember especially this day, Christina, Lois, David, Cindy and Paul, Sybil and Ian, Tammy, Brian, Carly, Owen, David, John, Ruth, Brian, Harold, Harriet, Christine, Wayne, Anita, Ruth, Jim, Dylan, and Vi. We pray for all suffering from the effects of the coronavirus, physically, emotionally, spiritually, praying that they may know your peace, your power, your love, and your healing strength upon their lives, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us from all sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. closing him for the healing of the nations.
bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.